Um, is it okay? So good morning, everyone, and thanks you all for being here for my presentation. Uh, as it was already said, I will talk about the simulation of Rich Mayomeshkov uh, turbulent mix syndrome using a PDF model. I'm a second year PhD student at the CEA laboratory in France. My advisor is uh, Olivier Soulard, who works in the same lab, and my PhD directors are Vladimir Sabelnikov from the Ionera and uh, Serge Simons from the LMFA of uh, Ecole Centrale de Lyon. So I know we already had uh, many presentations uh, about this topic, but uh, I wanted to give you a short reminder about the, the Rishmaya Mishkov instability. So this is an instability that uh, occurs when a shock wave interacts with the interface uh, between the two fluids of different densities. And once the shock is far enough from the interface, there only remains a, an isotropic freely decaying and diffusing turbulent mixing zone, so which is uh, ah, sorry, represented here. Uh, and uh, lastly, if the initial density contrast uh, between the two fluids is small enough, uh, this decaying TMZ obeys the Businesque approximation. So the velocity is incompressible and the concentration is a passive scalar. So now concerning the evolution of this TMZ, uh, it was shown that in Rishmayomeshkov flows, the TMZ will reach a self-similar state. And in this self-similar state, uh, turbulent quantities such as the, uh, the width of the mixing zone uh, will obey a power law uh, with an exponent uh, theta, which, uh, which is the growth rate of the TMZ. And it depends on the initial conditions of turbulence through the following relation where uh, S0 is the initial infra infrared sorry, slope of the energy spectrum. So this relation is due to uh, the principle of permanence of the large scales, uh, which implies that the growth of the TMZ will, will be related sorry, uh, to these large scales. So now our goal here consists in modeling uh, the evolution of this TMZ. So first of all, most uh, engineering models that are used for the Rishmayomeshkov configuration attempt to capture this self similar state uh, with a correct value of uh, the growth rate uh, theta. Uh, these models include, uh, for example, the K epsilon, the Reynolds stress, and the B fluid models. And for the two first one kind of models, they apply a first gradient closure for the turbulent advection term. Uh, but this modeling is a very simple modeling and pr uh, has been shown to present uh, several limits. Uh, by contrast, the one point uh, probability density function models or PDF models, uh, which are based on the calculation of uh, PDF, uh, give um, a PDF of the velocity fluctuations that uh, contain every one point statistic of the velocity fluctuation. That's why uh, more par particularly, they do not require any closure for the calculation of the third order velocity correlations, which are involved in the turbulent advection term. So in this way, they allow a better uh, description of the transport in the flow, and uh, they are not limited to the diffusion regime, as it's the case for the K-Epsilon and the Reynolds stress models. However, these PDF models were never uh, used or calibrated for uh, Rishmayomeshkov flow, and their behavior has to be analyzed, so this is the purpose of uh, this work. Uh, my presentation will be divided into two uh, parts. So the main one, uh, which is the first one, will uh, focus on the analysis of the properties of a given PDF model, which is called the simplified Langevin model. And uh, on the second one, I will give you uh, the first comparisons we were able to make between the results given by the model and the results uh, from uh, large eddy simulation. So as I uh, said before, we want to model the evolution of uh, the PDF of the velo velocity fluctuation. Uh, the evolution equation of this PDF can be derived from the incompressible Navier-Stokes equation and is given below. Uh, so I, remind, I recall that in this equation, we said that advection will be treated exa exactly, but uh, the box terms, uh, which cor correspond to the molecular mixing and the turbulent acceleration have to be closed. So this is why we use uh, our, P our uh, simplified Langevin model, which is a particular PDF model. Uh, so uh, this uh, 
simplified large model applied to our uh, turbulent mixing zone resulting from the Schlein Meshkov instability gives the following transport equation for the PDF where uh, we can see our uh, model terms uh, which are a return to the mean term and the dissipation term. And uh, this model uh, includes four uh, closure coefficients. So two for the equation of the PDF and two for the equation of the dissipation. So these coefficients are C1, C0, which is related to C1, and C epsilon and C omega. So we are going to solve this equation using a Lagrangian Monte Carlo method. Uh, which consists in uh, considering a given number of particles and for each one of these particles, instead of uh, solving the, the transport equation, we will solve uh, the following stochastic ordinary differential equation system, which is statistically equivalent to the original one. So we see the, uh, the appearance of the stochastic uh, component here uh, in our uh, equation si system uh, with the this term is, which is a vinyl process, sorry. So now that we settled the basis of uh, the simplified large line model, uh, we wanted to focus on its properties when applied to a rational Meshkov flow. So uh, first of all, the zero D analysis of this model predicts uh, self-similar behavior for our uh, TMZ. So once again, we have uh, the evolutions of uh, turbulent quantities given by power law. So this is the case for the width of the TMZ, the, um, the maximum of the kinetic energy and of the dissipation. And the exponent of this power law will be given uh, depending on uh, one of the uh, closure coefficient of the model C omega. So this uh, coefficient of course is, uh, can be adjusted in order to fit to the correct value of theta. And uh, thanks to this we were able to uh, verify numerically this uh, analytical uh, uh, result. Uh, this is what's shown here on this uh, figure. We plotted uh, the ratios of the quantities calculated by the simulation over the ones calculated analytically, uh, through thanks to this relation. And we showed that they remain, uh, they remain close to one, meaning that the self-similar behavior uh, is uh, verified numerically. Then, uh, we focused on the PDF, on their sh the shapes of the PDF given by the model. And what we can see is that they're slightly different from, oops, from a Gaussian. And if we go further and uh, divide the PDF into its symmetric and anti-symmetric parts, we can see that the, this deviation from Gaussianity is mainly due to the anti-symmetric part of the PDF, with the symmetric one uh, almost uh, superposed to uh, a Gaussian. So this observation raises two main questions. What's responsible for this deviation and are we able to express it analytically in order to identify it uh, clearly? Uh, to do so, we use the fact that in the center of the TMZ, the gradients of the velocity uh, uh, variances are weak. So this allows us to use the assumption of local weekly in, hom in homogeneous turbulence or uh, local uh, quasi-homogeneous turbulence. Thanks to this assumption, we were able to make uh, an asymptotical development of the PDF in the center of the TMZ. And by conserving the two first orders of the, this development, we get the following uh, analytical expression for our PDF. So uh, <coughs> what you can see on this uh, figure is the comparison between the anti-symmetric part of the PDF given by our uh, analytical expression uh, with the, the one given by the numerical simulation. And we can see that the they fit uh, quite uh, satisfyingly, which is encouraging for uh, our expression. Now, if we focus on this uh, expression, we can see that the shape of the PDF is a Gaussian, uh, a classical Gaussian with the, this term, but corrected uh, by this term, which is a third order Hermite polynomial. And we can see that the coefficient of uh, this um, polynomial uh, is related to the gradient of the kinetic energy which means that we have a diffusion type correction and that the deviation from Gaussianity is due to the inhomogeneity in the flow. Yes. Now uh, we can use this uh, analytical development uh, 
to go further in the investigation because we can use it to uh, estim have an estimation of uh, the, the sorry the, this product uh, because it's uh, directly um, calculable from the expression of the PDF. And this uh, calculation led us to uh, the formation of a diffusion term in the equation of the turbulent kinetic energy. So uh, what's important here is that we can see that in the center of the TMZ, the, our PDF model uh, behaves uh, like a standard K epsilon model. And uh, in particular, the turbulent transport will be given on, on first order by a diffusion term, which coefficient uh, CK here depends directly on the closures of uh, the PDF model. However, uh, I remind you that this property is not true on the edges of the TMZ, but only in the center. Now, uh, another important thing that uh, must be, be known in is that the, the previous results were obtained for a value of C1 of 4.15. This is the usual value used uh, for the simplified large model. But uh, we can note that C1 plays an important role in the shape of the PDF because it controls its, uh, its return to Gaussianity. Uh, to show this, uh, we plotted here uh, several uh, shapes of PDF given by several uh, values of C1. And we can see that uh, the, clo the closer C1 tends to its limit value of 1, the more the deviation from Gaussianity increases with the extremal uh, shape given by uh, this curve for a value of C1 of 0.2. And a second ob observation we can make is that uh, the shape of the PDF is really different from the one predicted by our uh, analytical development. So in order to understand why we have such a difference, uh, we made two hypotheses. Uh, first of all, uh, maybe this difference was due to our uh, quasi-homogeneity assumption which, uh, on which our development is based, which could be wrong. Or maybe uh, this is due to the truncation of the limited development we made because we only kept the two first order. And maybe the higher orders of the development were uh, more important than we thought. So to verify um, this assumption, we first decided to compare uh, the coefficients of the third order uh, Hermite polynom given by the analysis, by our analytical expression, to the ones uh, that we extracted from our numerical uh, results. And what we can see on this figure is that um, they, they stay really close uh, in the entire um, mixing zone. So uh, this uh, leads us to think that the quasi-homogeneous limit is valid, is not wrong, and really allows us to understand the PDF, PDF behavior in the center of the TMZ. And in order to comfort this idea, we, cho we also chose to, um, to extend our analytical development to include the fourth and the fifth uh, orders Hermite polynoms, and to see what was their influence on the shapes of the PDF. And what is shown here is uh, that the same curve as before, except for the dashed one, which corresponds to our analytical prediction. And we can see that it's uh, significantly different from the one we obtained before. So this comforts us in the, the idea that the difference between our numerical, analytical, uh, and analytical uh, results was due to the high hard orders, Hermite poly polynomes in the limited development. So now that we know a little more about our um, SLM properties, uh, simplified Langevin model properties, uh, we can give a quite uh, short debriefing. First of all, uh, I remind that I recall that um, in PDF models, we bring no hypothesis about the turbulent advection term in the flow, even for uh, the simplest PDF models, because the one we used is really a simple model. Then we showed that the asymptotic development of the PDF allowed us to show the, the existence of a diffusion limit for uh, the evolution of the turbulent transport. And this diffusion limit is uh, uh, similar to the one given by a K epsilon model. Uh, however, this uh, is valid only in the center of the TMZ, as we said before, and only, uh, of course, uh, applied for the Rishmayer-Mishkov configuration. 
And finally, we showed that uh, in this limit, the diffusion coefficient CK uh, depends uh, on the closure coefficient C1 of the model. And one can note that this coefficient is the only coefficient of the, the model uh, if we don't consider the coefficients uh, applied to the dissipation equation. And it plays many roles in the model. For instance, it controls the return to, his to isotropy and to, gaus to gaussianity for the shape of the PDF. And moreover, we've shown uh, in the equation of the turbulent kinetic energy that it also controls the turbulent transport in the TMZ. So this will be a key point in uh, our understanding of the properties of the simplified Langevin model. Now that we have uh, analyzed these properties, we wanted also to compare uh, the SLM results to the ones given by uh, large eddy simulations in order to uh, have an idea of the, its restitution of the evolution of the TMZ. So we proceeded to implicit large eddy simulations. Uh, yes, it's here. Okay, we used the compressible Euler code and uh, we initialized our uh, simulations by choosing an initial perturbation spectrum at the interface and then applying the linear theory of the Richman Meshkov instability. We we're able to get a velocity field corresponding to the post shock phase of the Richman Meshkov instability. And we used this to initialize the simulation. We also had two key parameters to fix for the LES. Uh, the S1 number, which had to be small to stick to the Boussinesque approximation, and the initial infrared slope of the energy spectrum, because as we said, it controls the growth rate of the TMZ. We did the same for our model. We, initi we initialized it by uh, extracting results from the LES and using it them to initialize the particles of the Lagrangian Monte Carlo code. And uh, once again, we had key parameters to fix, which are obviously the coefficients of the model. We fixed the value of C1 to be the same as the one used in real stress models, uh, generally uh, applied to Rishnai Meshkov flows. And since we aim to get the same growth rate uh, with the model and with the large eddy simulations, we fixed the value of the coefficient C omega, uh, depending on the value of uh, the infrared slope of the energy spectrum. So, uh, quick, uh, I'm going to be quick on the results. What's important here to see is that we compared the uh, results given by the LES and by the model, the LES in red and the model in blue. And what we can see is that the temporal evolutions, such as the evolution of the maximum of the, tumor of the turbulent kinetic energy or the evolution of the width of the mixing zone are quite similar. And it's the, shame, the same for uh, the, the spatial profiles, uh, like the profile of the kinetic energy at the final time of the simulation. And finally, concerning the shapes of the PDF, we can also compare the shapes given by the LES and by the model. And what we can see is that in the center of the TMZ, so here we are at the center of the, the TMZ, here at the edge, and this is an intermediate point. In the center, uh, the model uh, is really uh, satisfying uh, towards the, the result given by the LES but a uh, significant difference appears at the edges. So uh, this will be the, the, I mean the leading point for our future works uh, to try to understand uh, why there is this uh, difference. So as a conclusion, uh, we developed a Lagrangian Monte, La Monte Carlo code for solving the transport equation for the PDF. We also determine an analytical expression for this PDF resulting from the SLM and applied to the Rishmeyer Meshkov TMZ. Uh, this allowed us to show the existence of a diffusion limit for the turbine transport in the center of the TMZ and to idif identify the key roles played by the coefficient C1 of the model. And finally, we compared the SLM with results given by the LRS. And although the first comparisons were promising, we saw that there are still differences that exist and that must be um, corrected. And this is one of the perspectives of uh, our work to identify the physics missing in the model, to get closer to the LES, and then to uh, do the same work, but for uh, the, uh, the relative law instability. So thanks for your attention, and sorry for, the, for being late.